have a dream. I want to inspire people to make a difference all over the world. But I'm just a little gardener. And there's two different ways that you can do it, and I'm going to show you how you can. So the first way is you get a big group of people to make a change. You know, they all come together, they hang out, and they make a decision. They usually whine in about something first. For example, everyone has complained about the presidential elections, right? A billion dollars to elect a president. Everyone's nodding, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Everyone hates the idea. Okay, well, I say $2 million, two months worth of elections, and cut the drama, and we're done, right? So all you people nodding, let's get together and have a little group, <laughs> right? And let's make a change. Well, that's one way that you can make a change. But I'm talking today about how one person can really make a difference on their own. And I'm going to show you how I did it. This is the garden behind my fence. It looks rather unimpressive. And how it all started is I went out there and planted, even though you can't see this from my house, because I wanted to inspire the rest of the community. And when I went out there to garden, I was working in a marketing sales job, long hours. I rarely saw my, fa my family, and I was super, super stressed and ill. I took over a dozen prescriptions a day and felt sick all the time. I wanted to change that. And so I started this garden. A few months later, I asked my next door neighbor if I could put a fl few flowers outside behind his property as well. <laughs> I have a bit of an addiction issue, right? <laughs> and so this is what I did. I planted this sucker up with, you know, like the most incredible drought tolerant plants. I planted vegetables in between it and my community reacted. What happened is, every time I was out working in the garden, something wonderful would, people hugged me. I mean, hugged me, complete strangers that I never had met before. It was so cool to be, you know, touched in a way that I'd never been touched before. I mean, hugging, loving, they left love notes, messages for me. It's beautiful. And this is planted along a hell strip area. Hell strip is really an area that's a sidewalk and next to it is like this ugly grassy area. And this is really, the grassy area is what cities promote around the globe. And I want to change your thinking and have them think a little bit more about this type of garden. You know, that back garden wasn't enough for my community in my opinion. Right now, asthma is over a billion dollar industry just in the United States alone. And that's important to me because I have asthma. But it's also important to me because people, it's caused by something, right? It's caused by something. Doctors swear that it is. So I know that asthma. And here's the thing. Everyone continues to ingest chemicals in their body, either through food, inhalants, the fumes from our cleaning supplies, all of that, without thinking about the result that that might cause cancer or asthma or other diseases. So I started a little blog and I wanted to tell a story about how from the beginning of growing a plant, how then bringing it around and consuming it can be a healthy experience. And so I opened up a vegetable garden challenge. That's my front lawn before I planted anything in it. And it's the only sunny spot that I have. So I was convinced, you know, if you only have a sunny spot, well, then that's the only place that you can plant vegetables because that's what my grandmother used to do. And so outside, you see my little girl. She's sitting right here all grown up now. <laughs> but next, I planted the front lawn vegetable garden. Now, I'm lucky. Thank you. <laughs> I'm lucky because my city does support front lawns. You know, whatever you want to do with it. You want to plant vegetables in it? Fantastic. This is an ornamental edible garden, and it's full of nutrition. I donate over 100 pounds every year to the local food pantries, and then I write about it on my blog. So I'm telling people, here's how you grow a tomato. And then I'm showing them that in real life, you can absolutely do it. And this garden is organic. This is, by the way, this year's season. We had a horrible drought in Chicagoland, and guess what? It still looked beautiful because it's about common sense planting, not a fertilizer that's non-organic is ever used in this garden. That's how it looks from the sky. I'm so proud. 
Well, that wasn't enough. Because, you know, I have an addiction issue. And so I built this backyard. This is my backyard. I ripped out all the grass and I planted a shade vegetable garden. And everyone told me, oh, you can't grow vegetables in shade. Well, you can. And very nutritious ones at that. My favorite is the blue right there. It's kale. I would eat it every day of my life now. And before I grew vegetables, I never had tried kale. So this is the first time in my life. And I came from a farm country. You know, you'd think I would know more about kale. Well, that wasn't enough, you know. And so now I ripped out my side yards and forget the grass, down with grass, up with vegetable gardens, right? And I went up, I went vertical, and I planted anywhere I could using techniques that were all sustainable and then talking and educating about that. So here you see a wine bottle path. Everyone was drinking for Shauna. It was awesome. <laughs> And you also see that I've used some creative ideas on the way that I decorate the back wall. You know, they're old shovels that I've painted. and Well, that's called sustainability. I'm reusing what I already have, and I'm making something new out of it. And I wanted more people to do that. Well, that wasn't enough. The next step became, okay, now I'm growing these vegetables. How can I get people to eat the vegetables? Well, what I found out is no one knows how to cook a good meal these days. You know, I need a Jewish mother. I really do. And that's, you know, I, we couldn't find, you know, good recipes. You can find them online, but then people felt that they were too hard and they wouldn't cook them. Okay, fine. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set up a table in my front lawn, and then I'm going to prepare a meal for four for under $10, and I'm going to use my organic vegetables to do it. And so I now have tons and tons of videos out online partnering with Google. I, I partnered with Google+. Plus. They have something called Google Plus Hangouts, which allows you to interact live. And I really wanted to talk live while I was cooking. And so this represents, I set up on my front porch, right in front of the garden, the same concept, where I'm talking live and answering questions you know, right there on the spot, both about the garden and also about the culinary side of it. Because you can't have a garden without the culinary. You can't. They're united and married, and it's important. And so before I knew it, I had 170 videos on YouTube with over a half million views. I have 65,000 followers on all the different venues that I work on social media, and it became the most powerful experience of my life. Because now, instead of just talking to the local community about growing a vegetable, suddenly I was talking to the global community about making a difference which is really, really important to me. So let's jump back to the back behind the fence garden. So after the garden had been there for five years, my city decided to fee me for that garden because they said it wasn't planted on Eastman property, it was planted on right-of-way. When you plant it on right-of-way, it could cause trouble for the city. And I know that they could dig it up at any time if they wanted to, but I got mad. They decided to feed me. I went to the city council meeting, and I got up on the stand, and I said, you know, I have five minutes, and I'm like, you have, to, you have to allow me to do this without a fee, because it's not about me and the fee. It's about the thousands and thousands of people in my community who are poor, who are going bankrupt, who are losing their homes, and they can't afford to write a 10-page report and submit fees to anyone. The city said, I'm out of luck. And that blog post that I wrote about it became international news. WGN News ran a feature on it, and they called me a guerrilla gardener. It's awesome, right? I'm a criminal. <laughs> and also, you know, in the interview, they said it's tantamount to graffiti. That's how bad that garden is. You all just saw the garden. D do you think I'm, I'm graffitiing anything, you know? And so this came down to government bureaucracy. I was not going to give up that garden. I wanted to keep it. And so I had to follow the rules, which we should all be working with our cities to do. So I removed a ton and a half of rock and got very, very angry, kind of like Gloria Steinem, burn your bra mad, you know? I was ready to rip off my bra and throw it on the mayor's front porch. I was so mad. And he's a nice man. I just was so upset. 
So I decided to do something, you know, I had to do it. I painted my park benches, kiss my ass green. <laughs> and there you have it, my kiss my ass green park bench. It's the small things that are victory, you know. Well then, something happened one day. I'm sitting on my park bench, and a little old woman walks up. And she sits down beside me, and she says some amazing things. At first she says, nice collar. I'm like, yeah, I know, right? And then she said, you know what? House few blocks over, sold and rebought immediately. And the owner said that the reason that they bought the house was because of this garden, because this is a good community, because of this garden. And there are other gardens and other beautiful areas, but this is what community is about. And she got me all excited. She, she got up and walked away, and I was like, Oh my God, you know, I'm going to cry because something occurred to me. A garden is not a garden. This is about feeding the hungry, reducing crime, making a difference in community, beautifying your community, and most important of all, it's about economic feasibility. It's about showing your communities that you can keep the money within the community. You want more people to come in to visit, to live, to shop, and you can do it. So what started out as a simple garden turned out to be a way to make a difference, to re-stimulate our economy, my local economy. But imagine if everyone were doing this all over the globe. I'm not talking about the United States here. I'm talking about everywhere. That we can re-stimulate the global economy by working together and sharing with our neighbors the way that our grandparents used to share, you know? cooking dinner for other people when they're in need, taking things to them and helping them and helping them garden. It's about community. And, and guess what? We are not going to re-stimulate our common economy by the big government ideas. We're not. It's not. It doesn't come from the top down. It comes from the bottom up. Small businesses and everyday people contributing to their everyday social life. That is what's going to save our economy. And so here's how one person can make a difference. You buy local. You help your local neighbors. Meaning, you don't just wave at Joe across the way. That you actually get to know your neighbors. And you help them when they're in need. And you build local economy in the way that I'm describing. If you beautify things, the businesses will come. If you feed people, they have a reason to be there and share with you. It's, it's doing local things. So I made a decision about this green. It's not the color of green that I thought it was. Because I feel now, after having this experience, that it's about working with our community. This is not kiss my ass green. This is kick ass green. And this is good. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, I have a secret weapon to make all this happen. I mean, this is about men and women and communities working together across the globe. But here's the really cool thing. I, the secret weapon is girl power. <laughs> right? We're all here in this room. We're women. In every community around the world, in every neighborhood, there's a woman. And she can, she'll sock it to you. You know, she's the one who wants to share, to help, to make a difference, to grow things, to do anything that she can to be positive. We want all of those women doing their things just by themselves, one small step at a time. You don't have to do everything giant and big. It all starts at the bottom. And you can easily do that yourself. I know that I started out thinking that I would only influence my family. And now I have a global following of people who want to learn and who want to make a difference. And one last thing, that WGN news feature that ran got nominated for an Emmy. It's because people are so passionate and they all want change and they want to make good, social good. And so that's what I leave you with today, a challenge to go out there and make a difference for your communities, starting one simple thing at a time, just the way that I did. Thank you.